Good morning from Chicago, Illinois. My name is Lucy Gray and I am the co-founder of the Global Education Conference Network. I am also the Director of Educational Technology at North Shore Country Day School in Winnetka, Illinois. And I am broadcasting live from our new uh, mission-driven makerspace. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and to bring you somebody who I find to be very special. Uh, a year and a half ago, I had the opportunity to present at a conference in Mumbai, India at the invitation of the American School of Mumbai. And uh, I was there with two other um, uh, educators, Jennifer Klein and Sylvia Talisano. Jennifer Klein was one of our keynotes yeah. this week. If you didn't um, meet her, she's amazing. And Sylvia is also a, a noted educational technologist who is uh, uh, tricultural, I believe. I think she's German, raised in Argentina, now living in the US. Um, and because of Jennifer, we were introduced to Krishna Pujari, who you're going to meet in a moment. And Jennifer has worked, uh, done some work for a place called the World Leadership School, which is an organization based out of Boulder, Colorado. And World Leadership School um, works with uh, Krishna in India uh, to have kids do service learning projects uh, and travel to India. So Jennifer arranged for us to go on a two-day tour with Krishna when we were in Mumbai, and it was amazing and life-changing and eye-opening, and uh, I thought he was a great storyteller and um, representative of, of India. And the other piece of this that you need to know about Krishna is that Everywhere he goes, uh, it seems everybody knew him. We went to villages and uh, museums and, and other locations, and he seemed to know everybody. And he would pick up people's babies and say, and know their names. And um, he just is a, he, he is a people person, not a technical person, as he just mentioned earlier. And I think that his story and his love of India will come through in his talk today. And I, I want to introduce him to our wonderful community and, and have you get to know a little bit about his work. Um, so without further ado, I am going to turn you over to Krishna, who is the, the owner and operator of Reality Tours and Travel and also of a nonprofit that you may be interested in. So welcome, uh, Krishna, we're so happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. You know, my God, that was uh, <laughs> something completely different uh, introduction about me. Thank you, Lucy, for that. And also, uh, thank you, uh, Global Education Conference, uh, for giving me this opportunity to share, uh, share our story, you know, what we do in... Uh, in India. So if it is about my, um, uh, and I used to work in cafeterias, restaurants, and I, I studied in the night schools. And um, basically from six in the morning to six in the evening, I used to work in cafes and restaurants. And uh, I, then I used to go to school. So it was hard. I mean, it was like, you know, um, hard life, but uh, I'm glad I got some opportunity to come by um, uh, because when I was in village, it was uh, of course a lot of poverty and city. There we have a lot of opportunities, so I knew that if I go to Mumbai, I can I can earn money and also I can continue my studies. So I came and I got that opportunity, and. Uh, Basically, actually, my story, uh, actual my story starts when, uh, when, uh, when I was, uh, it was in 2002 when I was uh, working in a, in a, in a cafe, in a very touristy place. I had to meet one of, um, one, like one British guy. Uh, in fact, you know, I was uh, working in that restaurant as a waiter and, um, he, you know, when my uh, restaurant was closing, he just wanted to go in and I had to take his order because I was the only person in that restaurant who speaks a little bit of English. And uh, 
and then uh, I just took his order and left from there. And um, next day when I was playing cricket uh, in an open ground, I just saw him and I asked him whether he want to join us. And he said, yes. And he started to play with us. And then I realized I have met him somewhere. And I asked him, like, have you been to a small bar last night? And he said, yes. Oh, I took your order last night. So that was it. And then, um, so basically, even the, the connects connection, like when I asked him, like, how long he's going to be in Mumbai? And he said he'll be here for, uh, uh, for two and a half or three months. And then I asked him, what, what are you doing, for, doing here for two and a half, three months? And um, he said, I'm volunteering in, in Mumbai. And I asked him, what is volunteering? What is that? So what that means? So he said, I'm teaching in a school, in a, in a, in a government school, uh, a, a government run school where a lot of this, mainly a lot of slum children go there actually. So they, uh, that's where I'm teaching. Then I like this, you know, he explained more about volunteering and all these things. So I liked it and I said, okay, from tomorrow you can come and join us playing cricket every day. And that's it. We become good friends, you know, he used to meet me every day. We used to play. Uh, we basically our Brahmans started. So, um, and, uh, and then in 2005, this is uh, uh, Chris, um, uh, which um, uh, let's see your hello yeah so Chris um, he uh, he went to Brazil and uh, he took uh, the slum tour there um, and he explained to me about uh, about the slum tour there and then he said can we do something similar in Mumbai the first time when uh, he said I was like what like slum tour why you know all these things and then so i asked him to come to india uh, he came to india and then we went to dharavi uh, the slum so dharavi is one of the like a biggest slum in asia so where um, like more than a million people live there uh, so i went to dharavi with him so when when people are looking you know at us, especially chris he's a white guy with me and people used to be like you know what the hell am, am you doing here take him to gateway of india or take him to malabar hills all these nicer places of mumbai and um, then i used to cross question them why why you think i shouldn't be here so they are like, oh, these foreigners will come, take their photos, then go back to the country, and um, um, and uh, they go back to their country and say, look at the, you know, look at this people like poor people, hungry people, all those things. And then me and Chris, like, uh, you know, spend a lot of time there. And then basically I used to ask the, ask the people when people are kind of using words, like I should say, okay, you tell me what, what exactly you think about Dharavi. What is Dharavi? So why you think I shouldn't be here? And people are, then they are like, okay, come look at the look at the look at the, look at our factory. How many people are working? Um, uh, see these product which we produce goes uh, goes to this country, that country, and uh, come see my house, how clean it is. My child go to this school, all these kind of things. When they when they used to say that, I I am like exactly. This is exactly what what we want to do. We want to show people the the real side of you guys we want to show people a positive side of dharavi we want to change the negative image which normally people have towards islam so and also like to show show the different side of the city you know and normally when you think about a slum people only think okay slum is all about poverty People doing nothing, sitting around, high crime rate, children doesn't go to school, 
begging, all these kind of things. But there is, it's actually, it is completely different. So there is a lot of positive things happening. So, and then sense of community, you know. So Daravi, which I, I'm talking about, which is more than a million people live there. It is about 432 acres. And, and then the, the lot of commercial activities is happening there. So more than you know, 665 million US dollar they generate every year, you know. So a lot of small scale industries are there. And then if I want to tell you one thing, like more than 80% of Mumbai's garbage recycled in Dharavi. And Dharavi is the, the biggest market for leather, leather garments there. And then, uh, you know, the, the, almost everything is happening. So we thought, okay, we would like to show this side of Dharavi to the people. And we want to raise funds for the local projects. Because when we go there, as I mentioned, yes, there are a lot of positive negative sides as well. Like I would say, when we go there, you see the electricity wires hanging everywhere. Um, there are open drainages. Um, the working condition is quite bad. Things are there. It's because of um, uh, lack of quality education. So we thought, okay, so we can bring people into Dharavi, educate them about Dharavi, what exactly Dharavi is, and then we can raise funds and start some kind of educational projects for the people of Dharavi, you know. So anyway, in 2006, January, um, we basically started the tour. And uh, yes, it was, it, was, it was biggest challenge to convince the community, but, more than more than more than the convincing the community, as I said, I spent more than a month in there, uh, spending time with the workers, you know, um, uh, making friends. So it was easy. It was actually easy because I speak, you know, I speak Hindi or I speak Marathi. Um, I think you know I'm a I'm a friendly guy. So it was easy. But the convincing people to convincing people to come on the tour was the biggest challenge. In 2006, you know, in uh, January, when we are ready to do the, we made uh, some flyers and then we used to go and, uh, you know, give it to the people. And there are, you can't even uh, believe that there are people who threw the flyers on our face, like on my face, like, what are you talking about? Slum tour, you know? No. And even I used to, I used to go to people and say, can I please have one minute, you know? Can you please give me one minute? I want to explain you something. And mostly people are like, no, 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 you know? So, no, like you, you, don't, don't, no, no, don't, we don't talk. Or sometimes people will say, okay, okay, go ahead, what? So then when I, when I start, okay, we have a new company started and we do slum too. No, 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 go, go, go. No, it's fine. So, but, um, and on 24th of January, an Australian girl, she dared to come on the tour. So at the end of the tour, she, she just said, it is an eye opener. It is amazing. It is great. And we are like, yes. Yes, it will work. So now, just to give you a number, we take almost 20,000 people on our all the tours. So, and we don't do all, all the, you know, we don't do only the Ravi tour now. We do tours all over India. We also based in Delhi, we do a slum tour there as well. So especially let me go back to this slum tour. It's not a, it's not a, it is run very ethically, very responsibly. We have, we take, um, people take pictures and we take maximum six people in one group. And um, most of the tour guides we have, you know, they're, they're local tour guides, local guides, you know, local, this, I'll come back to this later at the end and I'll give you more details. And we, we, um, we, we ask people to dress modestly and it's a walking tour, you know. 
it is not just walking you know with your camera and then you know taking pictures it's more about the lot of information you give about about the slums and the slum people and uh, you know the facilities and all these kind of things so yeah and then we we um, we uh, we take like, a lot of people now and uh, how how it all happens so basically the reality tours and travel um, uh, take people to the slum or anywhere in india back to the community so at the moment we run a school in the, in the slum in daravi where um, uh, you know it's it's basically yes you know try that we have, we run a school where we have up to we have about 450 uh, students now children studying in our school and we have uh, computer classes in the slum we have um, uh, english classes and a uh, program um, which is basically um, basically youth empowerment program which i was uh, mentioning which is to youths right youths they need now you know the, the they basically we try to give them guidance you know for to do something you know for their life we just basically support them we just give them uh, confidence um because a lot of these youths you know the, they are from government school because even i'm i studied in a government school the whatever i am today i think it's because of my my what do you say destiny or my my luck i can say even now i when i'm 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 speaking here at the end of this i'll be like oh my god was it me so we we know that you know these people they need the guidance so what we do is we give them the you know, english education and then the personality development courses are involved in this youth empowerment program which will help them to find a better job you know and then of course to go back to the school um we we um we, our, our school is actually the child center method of uh, teaching where uh, we'll have like, we have like maximum uh, 15 children um uh, for uh, for one teacher so normally in government school when you when we if we talk there will be like you know 40 50 children in one classroom and one teacher and uh, this one is more you know 15 children for one teacher and then um, and uh, we we it's like um, all inclusive you know the method of teaching uh, we do and uh, as mentioned we have 450 children there and it's growing and uh, and if you if you um, and also if you see the the 80 percent i mean okay in the school we have almost a sports program you know uh, like our uh, our uh, girls uh, girls uh, soccer program why we started this um, just to like for example in india one of the issues like child you know, like young age girls get married and uh, girls that normally you know they don't go out of the community and uh, so we started this uh, girls a soccer program even to get this that even there is a story behind this this program when we thought okay so we should start uh, this one and uh, we you know i personally went to many houses almost 50 houses i soccer program for girls and the and the parents now were short you know like what we call a chedi in, in hindi so we don't want them and also it's more like a man's game and all these things so somehow and um, somehow i convinced uh, like two three families to send their girls now we have almost like 54 or 60 girls you know playing soccer with us um uh yeah so um that that is uh, like you know quite uh, popular right now and we also we used to have a, a cricket coaching classes but we ran that for 10 years and now actually we started this with another you know organization somebody actually been on the tour with us and then he 
uh, said, you know, we, I want to do something. So he sent all his, um, uh, he used to collect um, the cricket gears from U UK and send it to India. And we started surrounding that for 10 years and now recently we, we closed it. And then we have other programs like dance classes in the community. So basically we work with almost like, almost like 10,000 community members so, so far. And uh, yes, our, our organization actually started with only four people initially. Now we are almost, uh, almost uh, 100 people. And uh, out of those, 80% of them are from the community. Okay, if you see this slide, which, you, which is in front of us, most of these are, uh, these are this is a picture of our, uh, our teachers in our school. And um, actually, it's a bit uh, old picture. We have about 37 teachers in, in our school. And uh, out of them, uh, 36 of them are from Dharavi. And most of these, uh, these uh, uh, teachers are from our youth empowerment, uh, youth empowerment course. Because when we see a certain you know students who are really interested in teaching or who we, if we see there is a potential you know for them to be the teacher be our full-time teachers and uh, for me this is something something i'm always um, proud of because if these uh, you know they are not our teachers they are uh, they would, would be just uh, housewives and uh, you know be at home so this is you know we we are we are really as a as an organization we are very proud that um, we are you know we 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 could we could make these changes for the community so yeah we now we only we don't only do the ravi tour we do uh, almost all kind of tours in mumbai and uh, we are, uh, okay, this is uh, Arun. She was also one of our student. And uh, yes, from yep, Youth Empowerment uh, Program student. And uh, she, uh, she worked as uh, our um, reservation team for reality tours and travel. And uh, now recently she got married and uh, she's not working with us anymore though. But we have a lot of other examples um, like this. And we are, uh, yes, we, this is how basically our, our thing works. Like um, the reality tours and travel, take you on the tours and then um, and then uh, um, and then 80 percent of the profit from all the tours we do goes back to our ngo okay and you here you can see there is a there is a the the all these the all these uh, the blue which you see that's uh, the part of uh, the the uh, what do you say fundraising which we do for uh, for our program and um, and then rest you know we 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 raise through selling merchandises and uh, some you know private donors and all so and if I go back to the tour thing yes we are we are you know we 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 think you know we're doing good job and we get a lot of support from a lot of schools uh, like even Stanford. Um, Harvard and they also come you know come on our tour um, uh, okay so they also come on the tour and even uh, they uh, we yeah this is uh, this is a small, uh, slide even BBC they highly recommend our tour and New York Times and um, yeah, we are in all the tour guide books. So, but all these things, you know, takes me back to the back to um, uh, take me back to the 14 years when uh, when we when we started. As I mentioned, to get one person to come on the tour was uh, was very emotional, and uh, you know, it was hard. But now I'm I'm able to I'm, I got a chance to speak to you know all you people uh, from this channel. It is all uh, you know. I mean, I I really can't believe this happening. We, um, we also uh, work with many schools and uh, for example, there's one organization called World Leadership School. So they work, uh, they're from US and uh, they also, um, every year they come on a tour. Um, many schools come on a tour and then we take them to Dharavi and we, um, 
uh, we uh, uh, give me one minute. We we take them to Daravi and uh, they experience more. Um, um, yeah, so so they 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 come on a tour and uh, we do little uh, you know like when they come it's of course we normally uh, these young people you know whether schools or we we always welcome the schools to come on the tour because we think Daravi itself is very educational. So there you see the different uh, uh, pres pres perspective. Um, I'm sorry, my English is very, you know, not so good. So different, uh, different point of view of the uh, community or uh, people or a country. So uh, yes, leadership school send their, uh, send uh, work with different schools and they send uh, people to, I mean, students to us and we take them to Dharavi and uh, they get this opportunity to um, you know, see Daravi, and uh, they also uh, fundraise uh, for uh, different projects um, for the community. So, if anybody, any schools, you know, listening to me, um, interested, you know, they should, all, they can always, you know, get, you know, get in touch with us or World Leadership School. So, um, so I'm going to bring up the picture <clears throat> in a second of the World Leadership School. Um, I am having some technical issues where I couldn't find my mouse or my track, my trackpad was not showing my cursor. So I have to, um, I'm going to move the, your um, picture to my computer. So it's going to take a second, but I wanted to show this picture so you could tell us what was going on in it. And it will take a second because I have two different computers going and hopefully it will do it in a second. Um, so World Leadership School, as I mentioned before, is a nonprofit organization in Boulder, Colorado that does a lot of student travel programs, um, sometimes with independent schools, sometimes with, um, with other schools as well, and, or with, with other kinds of schools. And, um, and Jennifer Klein, who was one of our keynotes, um, didn't go on this particular trip, but she, I don't think, did, she, but she had, she had met you because you came to the States for, for um, meetings, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I've got the picture. So she had met you when you came to the U.S. as part of their training and all that sort of thing. All right. Now yes. let me find the picture. Hang on. Sorry, I'm technically challenged today. And I was thinking fun. I'm the only one. I know, I know you're not. Um, I'm just like, I have, I have too many irons in the fire as we say here. Um, all right, so here I've got the picture. And now I'm going back to Zoom and now I'm going to share it. And tell us what's going on in this oh. picture. This is this is uh, one of my favorite photo and uh, and also this is uh, one of my favorite activity. So this is a school from um, from um, uh, Brooklyn, uh, New York, and uh, we actually you can see uh, like we are all completely colorful. We play the uh, Holi. Holi is one of the you know the festival in India, so color mm -hmm. festival. So we just played Holi, and uh, even on the left you can see. There is a there is a field, you know. There's a you know lady on the field, and uh, we did little you know little uh, peanut harvesting, and then we played holy, and we are on the way to uh, you know uh, like take a shower. So that's where, of course, with local children there, we took this picture. It was uh, this picture was taken uh, in uh, March uh, okay. 2019. I think it was right after I was there, that Holly, Holly was right after when I was there. I missed it. Holy. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that. Yes. How do we say it? Holy or Holly? Holy. It's called Holy. 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 Okay. In, fa in fact, you can say anything because, in fact, in India, every day is a holy day. Because we, every time students come, there is some kind of festival. So there is some kind of holiday. We celebrate any kind of things here. So this was a time when we, where we spend uh, holy. So, um, and uh, see, actually, this is actually the working with students is my favorite thing. You know, that's why I'm so 
proud that I work with the you know World Leadership School because they uh, you know they are really doing great uh, to send you know these uh, young leaders to countries like India and uh, I through them I I really get this opportunity to uh, you know to share uh, you know part of my India uh, to them you know because this is not only like they come this is more about you know sharing our uh, our history our present our belief so what do what kind of service projects do uh, students do when they come through World Leadership School? Do they, uh, um, what do they do in the villages? I know they do homestays, so they actually stay in people's homes. We visited a couple when, when I was there. Um, mm -hmm. But what do they do for service learning? Uh, see, we, okay, so India program uh, is uh, slightly different because um, um, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I don't believe in this service project kind of thing. So we kind of, they, we done, did some service project before, but I believe in more uh, cultural thing, you know, spending more time with the, with the community, learning about, uh, you know, our customs, culture. Uh, but for example, with the, with World Leadership School, uh, what we do is we, uh, we, um, okay. So there is actually some more pictures I couldn't share with you. Uh, uh, what we do is we um, okay we on in there is one village we go which is actually my village there they learn local um, local dance local it's called yakshagana which is um, a, a local dance form um, they learn it uh, every day we'll have like you know we have uh, an hour or uh, an hour and a half class in the morning. And then we have our, uh, you know, the leadership curriculum um, and uh, we spend, of course, we stay in, uh, you know, we put them in homestays and uh, at the end of uh, their stay, you know, a day before they, they leave the village, they perform this art form, you know, they perform this to the villagers. So this is, this is what I love, right? you know, I, I, for me, the, the, the connection, through their culture, you know, they're trying to learn and understand the culture and belief or customs. So this is what we do um, on the program uh, in India. So it's more, it's more, pink, it's more impactful because, and it's also not, I, I guess the fear with, with some service learning is that it is done in a token way that doesn't have a lasting impact and under the assumption that somebody is disadvantaged and i think that's the the philosophical reason that maybe people aren't um like the service learning approach doesn't always isn't always yeah. effective. i think yeah. it has to be done I, we do a lot of service learning at my school and the kinds of things that we do are like our fifth grade um meets with a group of adults who have physical disabilities and they they live in a in a place um, they live in a home together I guess mm -hmm. and they interview them and say what do you need uh, how do you need something adapted to make life easier for you so last mm -hmm. year they they redesigned games or made things for board games that would make it easier for somebody with a physical issue to play the game. So they, they use something that we call design thinking to kind of redesign some aspect um, of, of that, that would help the people um, as opposed to um, donating or, or coming in and doing one thing and then leaving. Um, and it's an ongoing project and they do this every year. So it's, it's a, a standard fifth grade thing. But, um, and we do a lot of other things where our, like our students go to a um, homeless shelter once a month and cook dinner for the men that live in the homeless shelter um, and eat dinner with them and, and that sort of thing. So I think it's, you know, I'm not a service learning expert by any means, but I think um, 
I think that I think you have to be careful with it that it's not demeaning to the people that you're working with. Um, yes. And then the other thing I was going to say in terms of the cultural thing, I have a friend who works at a school in Colorado, or she did. She's at a new one now. Um, but last summer she went with like four or five of her students to India to study yoga for two weeks. So that's the kind of thing that you would do, right? Like that kind of cultural experience where um, you're, you're living in the community. Hmm. Right, that's the, kind, that's the kind of stuff that you'd like to see done more. Let's see if I can bring up um, World Leadership School's website and share it with you guys uh, so that you guys can see this. And I'm not sure if we've lost. Yes. And also see what, what we, what I, I what, what I try, these are. There it is. There's the website. You're, you're sharing that? Yeah. Can you see it? Um, I, I wonder if it's the internet. It might be the, your connection. But their website is showing. And it does have video on the front page. So that might be lots of web pages now have video. Um, so that might be it. I am sharing it. Can everybody else see it? Anybody in the chat? I'll put the link in the chat for people too. Okay. Um, so they can see it. If I can find the chat. <laughs> There is a chat that's showing when I'm not, I, it doesn't show what I'm sharing. That's the problem. So they have, and then your website is Reality Tour. Yes, Reality Tour. Let's look at your yeah. website too. Okay. Yeah, I can see that now, yes. Okay. It might just take a few minutes to For it to pop one. Okay. Yeah. And what I, what I like about your work is that it is combining um, a business with making um, an impact in your community. And, and so it's a social entrepreneurship enterprise rather than just a business. It's, it's two things. Yeah, that's and, what, that's what, uh, yeah. Please continue. Yeah, and the other thing I, meant, I, I remember from our trip is uh, there are a lot of young men that you have working for you, or probably young women too, that you have mentored um, and, and kind of given a step up. Do you want to talk about the people that work for you at yes, all? Yes, yes, that's what I told you earlier that I will, you know, when I was talking about the tour guides, I said I'll come back to that later because uh, yes you know i mean i'm i'm I, I don't know how to express these things you know i'm i'm so you know proud of these things because most of them are as some are students and also many um, you know from the from the same community and um, you know i we we as a, as an organization within the company so um, yeah, like uh, I can you, you go to uh, can you go to please uh, the the about about yeah about I'm going to, I'm going to turn off your video because the audio and then is if you go to about okay. and then about. you you can go to the team yes about and guides please. Please do that. Please do that. Okay, it's coming yes. here. And then you see about a team. About the team? Okay. Do you want guides or I can't hear you? Team. 
I'm the right yes. You have a lot of people working for you. There you are. And that's your partner. That's quite a team. Yes. I think we've lost you in the uh, in the audio. Yeah, you're you're muted. Or you're not muted, but you're. Um... No. No. Hello? Okay. Yep, now I can hear you. Nope, nope. No. It's off and on. I think I have. The, I think your internet is not. Um, well. you know, weak internet connection here. But I think we've gotten a really good idea of what you're okay. about, and and maybe we should maybe we should end now just because the internet's not doing is not doing well. I, the last thing I want to point out to people is is reality is reality gives. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah, I, now I, I can hello. Hear you now. Yes, I, I'm here. I can hear you now. That's better. I don't hear anything. So um, I, I'm going to wrap up just because it seems like we're having internet issues. But for anyone who's interested in the chat, I will put, when I stop sharing, I will put this link in here. This is the nonprofit part of Reality Tours that supports um, the communities that uh, Krishna works with. And so if you're interested in getting involved and seeing what they're doing in terms of working with schools and kids and communities in India, um, this is the page to go to check out to see their social impact. Um, so I, I, I feel like I'm talking over you, but sorry. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Let's see if that helps. I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me, but I can't hear it. And now I can hear you. So maybe it's just the sharing okay. that's the problem. So we won't share anything, yeah. we won't show anything, we'll just talk. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, but everyone, um, so here's, I'm gonna send the link to, um, to the Reality Gives website and Reality Tours is linked off of that. Uh, so please take a look at it. And um, if you'd like to reach Krishna, Krishna, what's the best way to get hold of you? Oh, I can share my number here. Um, How about your email address in the chat? Which is uh, uh, email, uh, email address, that's better. It's, uh, it's the same like Krishna at uh, reality tours and travel dot com. Okay. Or, even even so if anybody visit the, the website, even they can send an email from there. They all are okay. And uh, are you on social media too? Yes. And what do you Hello? prefer, Is it Twitter yeah. or Instagram? Oh, oh, Instagram is better. If um, okay. Instagram or Facebook, that is better because uh, I still don't know how to use Twitter properly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. So what's your Instagram handle? Is it Reality it's Tours? A, uh, yes, the company one is yes, Reality Tours. And uh, at Reality or something, you know, or Reality India. 
and the, my yeah. is uh, my personal one is uh, see the real india see the real india yeah that's yeah. mine okay the, uh, uh, that's instagram i'll put that in there uh, yeah, I think that would be great. I think you take great pictures of your travels and it's fun, you know, on Facebook to watch what you're up to and, and that sort of thing. And um, it's a great way to stay connected. So thanks for coming. I know it's really late where you are and you're in the midst of a tour. And I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us. And I hope that our global education community will reach out and and uh, look at your work a little bit more closely and think about how they can either support your work or um, engage in your travel services for students or for adults. So um, thanks for coming everyone. And uh, Krishna has a late night right now, so he'll get a little bit of sleep. Um, it's fine. For me, it is fine. For me, it is fine because I am very used to it. Sometimes people from, uh, you know, from even from US, many schools, they organize a meeting and uh, if the school timing is in the evening and for me it is in the morning you know like mid morning like 12 30 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock 2 a.m so i'm happy it's fine i can manage I'm really used to it. <laughs> wow i guess that's when you're when you're when you're truly a global citizen um you have to deal with those kinds of constraints yeah. we had yeah. uh, another, we had another keynote this morning who was from australia and uh, so it was nine o'clock in the morning, my time, and it mm. was three in the morning, her time. Oh, wow. And yeah, and I hope she didn't have to go to school today. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But Only thing was for this one, for this two, this, you know, you earlier, it was at 12.30 a.m. The only reason I requested you, can you please make it a bit earlier? Because I have to lead a tour for tomorrow. You know, whole day we will be, you know. Uh, on the tour so i don't want to sleep during the day yeah exactly so, <laughs> that's why i said okay can you please make it a bit earlier thank you for that lucy yeah <laughs> I'm just trying, thank you for accommodating us and um i really appreciate it and i'm glad to see you via video chat and reconnect and hopefully i'll get back to india one day with my family because i want them to please. meet you and to see please. india Please, please, because, okay. you know, we do tours all over India, you know, we can organize any tours yeah. in India. Yeah. And I would, uh, I would like to, yes, I would like to, uh, once again, I would like to say thank you for giving me this opportunity and uh, thank you everyone who is going to, you know, whoever listening to this and um, yeah, welcome to India. It's anytime. It's, it's, India is amazing. You know, I'll show you India through my eyes to, I'll show you the real India to you. Wonderful. Thank you.